Hey everybody, I want to talk to you today about how God loves to work through imperfect faith. There's a story that I came across again in the book of Acts just over the last couple of weeks, and I want to read it to you. Let me set the scene for you. We're in Acts chapter 12, and King Herod has basically started persecuting the believers with intensity. James, the brother of Jesus, has just been killed for believing in Jesus, and Herod is now trying to appease the Jews in and around Jerusalem by taking Peter prisoner, and he's planning on presenting him before the people at the end of Passover and probably having him killed. So this is a bad situation. So the believers in and around Jerusalem start praying with intensity for Peter, and the most incredible thing happens. In the middle of the night, while he's in jail, an angel appears to Peter, takes his chains off him, opens the doors in the prison, takes Peter by the hand and leads him out of the prison, past all the guards. Nobody sees him. Nobody perceives him. He leads Peter all the way through the city, out of the city gates in safety. It's an absolutely incredible miracle. An angel is sent to save Peter from being in prison. And I want to pick up the story in Acts 12, beginning in verse 12. This is what it says. It says, Peter came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. They were praying for Peter to be saved. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice, because of her gladness, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. So this precious woman, Rhoda, is so excited that Peter's there, she runs inside to tell everyone, Peter's out of prison, forgets to even open the door for Peter. But they, the other people in the house, said to her, you are beside yourself. In other words, you're you're just emotional, you're worked up, you're seeing things. But she kept insisting that it was so. So they said, no, it's his angel. Now Peter continued knocking, and when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. And here's what I love about this story. The believers are gathering to pray. So they have enough faith to pray. They've gathered to pray for Peter, and they've been doing this for hours or possibly a few days for hours, and yet they're actually astonished when Peter shows up outside their door. So here's what this tells us. They have the faith to pray for Peter, but they didn't actually have the faith to believe that Peter would be miraculously delivered from jail. Or perhaps like many of us, they had the faith to believe God could do something, but but not a miracle miracle, like a miracle through natural means, the way that when we pray for someone who has cancer to be healed, we're often not really expecting the cancer to just disappear. What we really mean is God help the treatment to work and heal them that way. So these people are gathering to pray for Peter and their best hope is probably, Lord, help him to get a fair trial, help the charges to be dropped and for him to be released from prison. But he miraculously shows up right outside their door and none of them are expecting that. I love that. They have enough faith to pray but not actually enough faith to believe for a totally supernatural miracle. And here's what I want to encourage you with. You have a measure of faith right now, and I don't want you to ever be discouraged from praying for something because you realize that you don't have the faith to believe for an outstanding miracle. You know, there's faith involved in just the act of praying because when you're praying for something, it proves you have enough faith to believe that your prayer is actually gonna make a difference. And that's faith, and God can do a lot with a little faith. And maybe you've only got the faith to believe that God can do something, but in a sort of normal way if things go the right course. Maybe you don't have the faith to believe for a supernatural miracle. Pray with what you have, and here's what you're going to find. You're going to find that as you pray, your faith is going to build. You're going to find that God will do more through your prayers than you expected or you imagined. Don't ever let the fact that you don't have titanic, earth-moving faith yet stop you from praying now. Maybe the way the Lord wants to grow your faith is by taking you from where you are to somewhere greater by doing a miracle that you didn't even expect was possible. That will grow your faith in a hurry. I think we all know that's true. So let me encourage you one more time. Don't let your level of faith now discourage you from praying where you're at. God wants to grow your faith by doing more through your prayers than you could possibly imagine. He's for you. He's with you. He hears every prayer you pray. 
So pray with confidence, believing not in the power of your faith, but in the power of God, the power of God to do great things through even a small amount of faith. Give them something to work with. Start with where you're at and let's get praying.